Hey everyone and welcome to The Photography Shop. The Photography Shop is a new platform for online reviews, training and discussions about products and techniques of interest to my fellow passionate photographers. I personally have always felt that education is a key element to understanding both photo gear and techniques. When you understand the gear, then you get the focus on taking great photographs. One thing I want to help manufacturers of both hardware and software see is that when we photographers both see and understand how a product works, and that it can accomplish something that we want to do, we buy it. I'm here to explore and share gear and techniques to help photographers create better images, be it portraits, landscapes, image editing, or video. I hope to inform, teach, and of course, we want to have some fun. Now, today's show has two different features, an intro to a great speed light system, ideal for a portable use anywhere lighting kit, and a visit to a national park to take a look at composition for better landscapes. Let's start with the lighting system. We're going to take a quick look at the Fotix Metros Plus Lighting Anywhere 3 kit. It has three speed lights, a couple of light stands, light shapers, speed light mounts, and the amazing Odin 2 wireless controller. This is one of the most powerful speed light controller systems around, and it matches or exceeds most camera manufacturer's systems. One of the best parts is it also costs about 30% less. There's a lot to this system, but I wanted to offer you a quick tour of the gear and show you one really cool feature, the ability to automatically set and change light ratios in TTL right from the top of the camera. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, I want to show you a little bit about some gear. I've got a really cool flash system here if you're looking for some speed lights and you really want the ultimate control. I've got a system here from Fotix. This is the Metros Plus Flash and the Odin 2 controller. I've spent a lot of time with these things and I've found them to be among the best performing, most powerful and easiest to use system out there, particularly because of this controller. First, let's take a real quick look at the flash itself. It's a standard hot shoe flash. Just turn on the uh, on off power there and you look on the bottom and the one thing we need to tell it, since we're going to use the Odin to control it, is we need to tell it to look for the Odin. So to do that, you just hold in the right button and you get a menu of choices. And we want to make sure that it says Odin RX or Odin Receive. That means it's going to talk to the Odin controller itself. You then hit the middle button and arrow over and you'll see the channels. We've got one, two, three, four in this setup. And then next to that, we've got the groups A, B, C. So we're going to keep this one in A. This is going to be our A light. And then this one over here, we're going to do the same thing too. Everything the same, channel, group, except our group here is going to be B. So this is going to be our B light and our A light. And when you do this, it gives you a lot of capabilities to control through the controller itself. Now, right on the top of the controller, I've got, you can see it's got ABC with TTL right now. And what I can do is just hit the corresponding letter underneath the display to make changes to that particular light. So I've got my A light. You see it's lit up, it says TTL. If I hit the mode button, I can change it to manual. Hit it again, I can actually turn the flash off. We're gonna leave it on TTL for now. Same thing with B. Now, notice what just happened, that's kinda of cool. I can set one group of lights to be TTL and then the other ones to be in manual. Why might you wanna do this? Well, let's say for example, you're doing a set, a portrait set, and you've got a hair light whoa, way up above your subject. You don't want that one in TTL. You don't want it varying. You want that to be a constant light because TTL isn't really gonna know what to do with the measurement of this light way up here. So by putting this one in manual, it will be a constant light. Once you get it set, you can kind of set it and forget it. But the real power comes when you have these both set for TTL and you use the automatic ratios. Let me show you how to get to there. Let's turn our B light back to TTL and they're now both set to TTL. And I'm gonna hit the mode button one more time and you see this kind of bar that shows up and this gives us ratios. If I hit the A to B button right here, I can then dial this back and forth and set automatic ratios from one to one to eight to one. I'm gonna go four to one in this light and set up a little portrait set. And by doing that, it's gonna allow me to 
automatically change the light ratio just right here. I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to go over to the lights. Also, if I just wanted to switch from, say, short lighting to broad lighting, I can do that again. All I have to do is spin this to the other direction until it says 4 to 1 to the other side, where B will become the stronger light, A will become the weaker light. It's that easy to create ratios when you're doing portraits. And we're going to test this with our little uh, wig head dummy named Dolores, and we'll see, just with a couple of lights and some shoot-through umbrellas, just by spinning this dial, we can get completely different lighting ratios right from the top of the camera. That's really handy when you're in a studio situation. So let's photograph Dolores. Let's set that up. So I've got Dolores here. I've got my controller. I'm going to put it on top of my camera. You guys know I'm a Sony shooter. So this is an A7R2. Just puts right on the hot shoe. I've got it set to 4 to 1. And let's see what that looks like. All right, so I've got my wig head here. I'm going to set it for A is the most powerful, which is over here. So what that's going to do is create a short lighting pattern. It's going to be brighter here and a little more in shadow here. Let's shoot that. And that works great. You can see that this side of the face is darker. We can see some of the shadow underneath here. All I need to do is head A to B, spin it to the other direction, and then what's going to happen is it's going to broad light. This side will be bright, and then the shadow will be over on the other side. So that's a pretty cool capability, being able to change your light ratios right from the top of the camera in TTL with not doing anything. Now, a lot of you guys know I like to shoot manual in the studio. But when you need quick ratios, this is really a great way to get it. So again, if you're looking for a new flash system, you can't go wrong with the Metros Plus Flash and the Odin 2 controller from Photix. Now that we've done some studio time, let's head out west to Bryce Canyon National Park. It's one of my favorite places to photograph. But it's also very easy to get overwhelmed by all the amazing formations and scenes that present themselves. Let's talk about some tips that can help to make your landscapes more successful when you visit a great spot like Bryce. So I'm in Bryce Canyon National Park in the, kind of the southwestern corner of Utah, and I'm standing in front of a place called, it's actually Sunrise Point, which is just above us, but we have these incredible features behind me called hoodoos. And they are a great subject matter when you're going out to shoot. And the first thing you should always ask when you're going out to shoot is, why am I taking this picture? When you look through your viewfinder, you should understand what's in there that made you stop. Why did you stop to take this picture? If that's not clear to you, really stop and think about it. Because if you don't know why you're taking the picture, it's not going to be very good. It's just going to be a snapshot. As I've witnessed time and time again since I've been here, if you're just walking around just kind of willy-nilly snapping the shutter, whether it be on your camera or your phone, you're just going to get snapshots. You might get lucky and you might get a good one, but wouldn't it be nice to always get good results? And that's what we're after. So when I look through here, if you want to create a really good landscape shot, it really helps to have something in the foreground, something in the middle distance, and something in the background. And that draws you into the photograph. That draws you into the picture. So I've got these hoodoos right here in front of me. And I've got this ridge going out behind, and then an entire wall of these formations across the other side of the canyon. So this naturally is going to create a great composition. And that's what you're after. And when you do that, you have a photograph that you're going to like looking at again and again. So when you're lucky enough to visit a place like this, this could be a once in a lifetime trip. Doesn't it make sense to get the best photographs you can? And again, as I mentioned, it doesn't matter if it's your phone or if it's a top of the line camera. Follow the compositional rules, not rules, just guidelines, but ask yourself why are you taking this picture? If you can answer that question, you're going to have a much better chance of getting a great result. One other tip, when you're looking at something like this, try to narrow it down to one kind of small thing or one kind of cluster of objects that are your subject. If you try to capture this entire scene in one image, when you show the photograph to someone else, they're going to have no idea where to look. It's just going to be all over the place. And unless you're going to make giant prints six feet wide, all of the features are going to be way too small. So simplify, make it clear what you're asking the viewer to look at, and you're going to have a much better photograph when you're done.
So that's it for today. I hope you found some information you could put to use. I'm going to close today with a little bit of self-promotion. I hope you don't mind. One of the activities that we love to run from our studio are what we call photo tours. Now, unlike photo workshops, which we also do, photo tours are designed for passionate photographers to have an opportunity to photograph in beautiful places, but while sharing our wonderful travel experience with a non-shooting partner. We spend part of our day creating photographs, and the rest of the time touring, sightseeing, shopping, and of course, eating. Now, while the photographers are shooting, their non-shooting partners have the opportunity to sightsee with their own private guide or do some exploring. No waiting around for the photographers if they don't want to. We're heading to Ireland again this summer, so if you'd like some more information, visit my landscape webpage at joebradyphotography.com. Here's a quick video to share a bit of the experience. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you online again real soon. Bye-bye.